Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, really cool video here. One of the fastest, if not the fastest person to ever complete the game. Totally free to play. Min maxing all of his resources. We're going to do an account showcase where he shows us some of the teams he used to beat. Different areas of faction wars. And you will be shocked at the levels of some of these champions he's using. Uh, the teams to beat things like Clan Boss, Doom Tower Hard. Everything in the game. Absolutely solid play from Earbad. Let's get into it now. How long have you been playing Raid for? Talk us through what's going on. So it's a fraction over a year. Uh, I know the account that people are talking about on, on BG Showcase, and it's, it's not the same account as mine, although they didn't seem to get actual evidence as to how old the account truly was. But um, what I tried to do the whole way through is set myself more and more challenges. So although sure. I always set myself the goal of being free to play, and that was my initial handicap. The first thing additional to that I did uh, is I didn't ever buy masteries, so I forced myself to grind through Minotaur. Really? Even your <laughs> first was, champion? Even the first champion, which was painful. Wow. <laughs> really painful. <laughs> like, that's actually incredible because that would have slowed you down a ton. Definitely surely. Did. Definitely did. Yeah, it that would have slowed a you a load. <laughs> You know what, before, before we get into something, like, I'm, just, I'm just seeing a couple of things here. 25 <laughs> sacreds, yeah. 25 <laughs> sacreds! 5,000 gems! We're going to get ripped to pieces right now. Are you sure this is the free-to-play one that I've logged into? What is it, going it is. on? I sent you uh, the video where you can check the user ID that matches up against that. That's insane. Is, so uh, how I have you done that? That's mostly just... So a lot of the times... Um, between fusions, player are actually, in inverted commas, generous, and they give you a few uh, tournaments where you can get legendary books or sacred shards. You just have yeah. to actually push for those ones, check the points, see if they're ridiculous or not, and then pick the ones sure. you go for. Between okay. that and Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare Clan Boss, you do actually pick up quite a lot of sacreds, particularly if you don't pull on any 10Xs and you don't get suckered by, <laughs> by the, uh, the prospects of these, these champions and the other things. So if you're literally only pulling to do fusions and only pulling on 2Xs. Yeah. So are you... Because um, we've had several 2X sacreds over the last, I want to say like eight weeks. We've probably had it three lots. I think we've had it three times over the last eight weeks. I pulled once in those three and i only pulled i think it was about 12 sacreds i basically capped out the five and a half k points to get the legendary books and then i stopped yeah that is so um like patient and conservative i guess is uh fair play fair play so you've also got 74 ancients 26 voids wow that's actually it's insane man waiting. that's pretty ridiculous all right, you, you've mentioned it, so we might as well have a look. Do we have... <laughs> I've been what saving is up. This? Look, <laughs> guys, look at this, this brew town. This brew town looks like he's a content creator getting a load of free stuff. What's this? Save everything. <laughs> Just use it wow. when you need it. And Again, so... they give you brews all the time. Yeah, you do, do anything yeah. in this game, they throw brews at you. Just don't spend them if you don't need to. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible, man. Um... We've got 17 five-star chickens, 16 four-star. What is going on here? 41 legendary books. Exactly. Because most people aren't booked. <laughs> what, and You're... why is that? Why, why are you not booking your champs? So I, I was going to let you book Astralon tonight. That was going to be one, okay. of your, one of your things you get to do. So I'm very careful about who I end up booking. So I booked Tormin only probably a couple of months ago in the end. I hadn't booked him before yeah. that. Arbiter's booked, Razin's booked, Vizier's A1 is booked. Um, yeah. Drexar's booked. Brago is not booked. He is in Clan Boss. He runs on a 4 3. Completely unbooked. Really? Yeah. That's incredible as well because, I mean, he's so. Is he your only decrease attack champion? He is. I did not pull an A1 decrease attack champion until January this year sure. so i i ran the whole way through clan boss using not an a1 attack down champion my first decrease attack was madame yeah then it became stag knight then it became light sworn also on a 4-3 then it became iron brago i do now have vizier which makes it kind of uh, makes it a ton easier yeah yeah, uh, yeah. 
even you know when you have the quest where you have to do 50 debuffs i run no vizier and brago does get it down as long as you have the four three lined up so he's always doing decrease attack before the first aoe sure it, you don't get that many resists and if you do bad luck yeah 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 i actually i mean i think he's great in clan boss I, unbooked though i'd say i guess you got vizier vizier makes a big difference unbooked i would be a little bit dubious like, well, it's, I just it's feel like your run at some point falls apart. It's a hundred percent chance to put decrease attack. The only thing with the unbooked is that he doesn't get his skills as quickly. But if you're running him on a speed tuned four three, it makes no difference. Ah, okay, yeah, debuff chances for the provoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes makes sense. So it's just that that kind of three percent chance to get a resist. Which, exactly. Yeah. And so a few people asking here about the arena. How have you found, you know, the last... Let's just have a quick look at your... I guess we're not going to see because you've gone over time of you. Yeah. How, how many days did you say you've been on, on the account? Do you know exactly? 10th of March is when I actually created the account. So it's a little over a okay. year. About, so 11, about 13, month, 13 yeah. months now. I actually thought months. I started later because I didn't really play that much at the beginning. I was pretty casual at the, the start. And I only really remember starting to play the game in any kind of meaningful way during the vanguard fusion so i thought it was actually mid-april but i sure. checked when i checked with Plarium to have the confirmation that it's free to play to provide you, <laughs> you can then put in they can find nice. also the date creation because i asked that as well and it was it was 10th of march um brilliant so so what's your um what's your arena team and what's your arena experience been like over the last year then so right now, in terms of the sort of more of a farming team, it's it's Arbiter, Madame, and then um, Astralon and uh, Countess, because it's just yeah. kind of the easiest auto as long as Madame wants to actually do her ability, and you just got to decide whether she's going to or not. Sure. But before that, what it was for, I'd say about eight months, nearly eight months in a row, was was uh, Arbiter. Uh, once I got Arbiter, that is uh, Arbiter, Madame, Tormin, Nethril. So you end up with a double oh, CC, yeah. and if you do go up against anyone that's faster than you, you've got the Tormin counter, so you've kind of got that that option. The way I ended up actually getting to gold four to get Arbiter was running a Jingle Hunter, Seeker, Tormin, Nethril. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Skullcrown's never really featured as one of your... No, uh, Skullcrown was actually quite a late pull. Right. Uh, I only actually end up building a to take over... Um, Campaign farming and for faction wars. Yeah, yeah, and you actually got some really good champions down here that are not yet sixty. But on the way up, by looks at Deacon. Ugo. Yeah, like the the recent. Yeah. Uh, the recent shard pools have been quite kind, and they definitely helped with some of the uh, some of the finishing. But all of those champions were actually fifty when I did faction wars. It was just in the uh, champ training that's just finished today. There was a legendary book at fourteen k points, so. A couple sure. of those six stars have come from from getting that legendary work. Yeah. You've actually got a few void legendaries as well. Nice. Let's see if there's anything lurking in the vault. More legendaries. So you've got a couple of dupes actually still. Um <laughs> Yeah. Lots of epics as well. I know you've been so this is what people don't really get, and I, I say it a lot actually. So free to play can do anything in this game if you invest the time. And you know, you've playing for just over a year and you can see just how many epics you can gain in a year and you can do anything actually just with epics in this game like you, you don't legendaries help but you can do anything in the game with just epics um Certainly. but as long as you invest time and get you know, you know have a good understanding of gearing and um and sort of champ synergies i'd say what yeah. i've noticed during the game the few areas where specific champs really really matter is probably ultra nightmare clan boss that is a bit of a gate the yeah. last 10 floors of doom tower in last cycle that yeah was doom tower is tough gated. doom tower is tough yeah um more the waves isn't it it's more yeah um, just the last 10 yeah. floors where you end up with all those champs that are going like 250 speed the siffies the rotas or yeah. uh, loads of torments like that if you don't have certain champions, it's incredibly difficult. And then yeah. with faction wars, again, like some of the factions, if you don't have the right champs, it's a real challenge. Mm. And I, I end up having to do some of the faction wars in really weird ways. Like Demon Spawn, I didn't have either Allure or Duchess. 
and I've not found anyone who did a clear without the, either of those two. And it was uh, therefore difficult to come up with a strategy that would actually yeah. get it done. And that was that was probably the hardest thing I'd say I've done in the game was clearing that Demon Sworn Twenty One without Definitely. having any of those main champs. Have you ever made it into plat? Um, I mean, what during the week? Yeah, just like ever. Have you ever actually been in plat um, tier? I, in truth, I've never bothered. Okay. Because I sit there with a single arbiter defense pretty much the entire week oh, do you? Just to make yeah, my yeah. Uh, to make my which I have right now just to make my farming easier. Um. I've never yeah. really bothered. The reason why I ask is because I see you're, I mean, super active. 240 attacks means that on a Sunday, you pretty much use your to like all your tokens for the week. Yeah. Pretty I, much, I yeah. use all of the tokens that you get. Each. Yeah. Well, let's have a look then. So you sent me through some of your, or all of your faction war teams. So let's have a look through them. Um, this is one that probably most people find the easiest. I have to look this for a second i tried to send you them on uh, google drives as well to make it easier for you to click through yeah this is okay so i'd say um yeah this is probably the easiest one for people generally to do because you get your arbiter apothecary is a great rare anyway and then it's just kind of pulling in some filler and make sure you've got someone who's going to do some damage so um and, and obviously with arbiters you can just rip res people <laughs> so, it, it's i'd say it's almost it's almost an irrelevance it's literally that was the when i first got arbiter it was the first faction where i cleared you can see she wasn't even 60 at that point just whatever champs you've got to go with her it'll get the job done yeah yeah a few few questions coming out i'm just gonna pick a few of them up how fast is arbiter um, now 338 338 yeah which is decent. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, look at his medals. Yeah, I saw that, Carl. He's got like 1,500 medals. Why, why do you have medals that you're not using out of interest? Just haven't decided where to put them yet. I had 3,500 medals yesterday. I spent a few just so I didn't look Did too you? bad. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know the, um, the new clan wars, um, part of that process is to spend medals me. you get oh, points for spending medals because i burned my pc it's a, it's a ridiculous thing to add into the <laughs> game to be honest one. but that is really um, ridiculous yeah so here we go barbarians then um one two three four level 50 so i didn't check that for this actually yeah one level 50 basically here. it's okay. the still solo machine uh i'd say for 90 percent of the boss fight it was still alone everyone else was dead and eventually She'll take down the two ads, manage to revive everyone, and just kill the <laughs> boss by herself. Yeah, nice. So nice. a well a well built sill in relentless, ideally, will carry barbarian faction wars. Pretty much doesn't matter yeah. who you have with her. Did you move gear from like one faction to the next? No, uh, I did move some individual pieces here and there, and for certain factions, I will say I had to move cer uh, like certain gear sets, particularly when the later clears when I was using regen extensively. But yeah. other than that, I tried not to move gear as much as possible. So a lot sure. of the champions are kind of built still similar to how they do, because I'm still trying to farm faction war twenty with each okay. with each faction. So they're not. I tried to move gear as little as possible. Partly to save yeah. silver, because, you know, why waste money? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. One, two, three, fifties, 140, and a 60. It's really impressive, actually. <laughs> to come in, you know, a lot of people say you need four 60s at least for faction wars, so... So for this one... Insane. This one, the, the real key one there was probably Oathbound in a stun yeah, set. Yeah, Oathbound's cool, yeah. So yeah. with also there's a quite a lot of synergy in the team. So with Stagnite putting the decreased attack on everyone, Oathbound's um block cooldown skills becomes yeah. 100 percent Um with Chevalier putting the small increased defense, you get the block debuffs for Minaya. So that's kind of how it was. And then obviously Valerie extends okay. all the buffs. So it's also speed tuned that it works that way, that they'll all buff in the right order and Valerie will extend it all. Yeah, just looking at the times here. <laughs> 23 minutes, 9 minutes, 19 minutes, 18 minutes, guys. This is this is commitment. <laughs> um, I love it. Let's have a look at the Orcs. So Orcs, you've got a couple more. you actually got a really strong Orc team, to be fair. Is this one, more, one of your more recent ones that you've done? 
you're looking at them in order of of how I cleared them. It just happened okay. to be that I Sandlash was probably the first or second epic I ever pulled in the game. Was in my clan boss team for a while. Creela was the first fusion I completed and thought yeah. I would want to use her. Obviously, once I pulled Seer, leveled her straight away. Yeah, for sure. And then Brago, as soon as I got him, he was in my clan boss team, so built him. So it's kind of more of a combination of there were four people that I'd used or wanted yeah. to use in other content. Uh, yeah. And actually, in that, all four of them are wearing life steel because I had no healer. And then uh, old okay. Hermit jogs in regen just in case someone died and needed a, a res, but actually no one died. So it's yeah, I mean fun. this is a strong team here. Generally, um, Prela, great champion. Yeah, th this isn't far off actually what my main team is now. I don't have Hermit built, but um, my like dungeon, uh, my level twenty farm team. It's not much different to this. Do you um? Did you do any of these on auto, or is it is it all manual for the boss? Like levels? Um, some are auto, like the Barbarian one was full auto, High Elf's full auto. This is manual because of the whole buff exchange on the boss. Yeah. You have to kind of time time that and obviously keep Sears, um Karma Burn in case uh, Sandlash's um, ally protection gets stolen. So that one's a bit more manual. The Banner Lords was extremely manual. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> basically that right ad couldn't take a single turn because he would 100% one shot any one of my team <laughs> so it was a combination yeah. of Chevalier's stun and Oathbound's freeze on the A1 cycling to constantly keep him CC'd yeah 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 oh, that's cool let's look at the next one we got then um, Ogryn Tribes next one done 16 minutes again this is actually a really strong team but look at the levels you like that <laughs> yeah five star five star five star five star six star wow i'll tell you what was hard for ogren tribes when i was doing it i found the stage it must have been maybe 18 that had a tour yes i think 17 or 18 i can't remember which one it was but i found that really difficult to free star for a long time like that was probably one of the hardest levels for me to to clear more than some of the boss fights so for me, um, the way I got around that one basically was ally protection from Skull Crusher. Yeah, yeah. That, that's basically the only way I, I survived that that fifth wave or the third wave rather um, for the three. The Skull Crusher is doing most of your damage here as well. That's interesting. Has to. There's no one else to. <laughs> Everyone's five star, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't get damage out of five stars. Like you get utility, but you do not yeah. get damage. Sure. Um, let's see what the night revs look like. Night Revs, 22 minutes. <laughs> um, faceless in there. A lot of people um, talk to me about Faceless for their 21 team just because of the damage he puts out. Yeah, This I is mean, actually a pretty good team. You've got, what, one, two, three pretty much passive healers. And then damage, damage, yeah. So Burgoth was actually there just for the provoke. I just needed some way of getting a bit of CC on the Valks. Sure. So that's the only reason Burgoth came. Got more than enough healing from Doom Priest and Rector, not to not to need Burgoth there for healing. Yeah. And on most of the runs here, was it a case of several attempts before you actually got to, you know, the boss fight and you know, once you had your team built, or was it almost like, no, we're good to go now? No, it was there was definitely many iterations. Partly because yeah. it was kind of a, a case of finding what's the minimum amount of keep re-gearing or books or masteries or whatever it might be what is the absolute minimum i can get away with yeah in terms of building additional champions above That's what cool. i already have for other content so yeah it took it took like many attempts i'd say on on most of them and were we in stun gear here on the skull crown or just straight down crown is, is in stun gear is yeah. yeah did you find you needed that for a lot of teams just to kind of get you through the waves uh, in some instances, yeah, I'd say actually the set I ended up uh, relying on more was regeneration. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, actually, since it was since it's buff, it's probably better than life steal for this type of content. It really is, particularly if you're running people that don't put out a lot of damage. So be it five stars or certain really tanky champions that that maybe only have a single hit ability, yeah. and you're not getting that damage out. So a couple of examples: Caden was in regen. Nullhorn regen, Umbral was in regen. Sure. That's cool. We've got another 11 minutes here. So this is probably 
I, I actually found there's a lot of decreased defense type champs in this faction. Um, I bet Caden coming in would, was probably quite a big difference for you having the the um, revive there. Certainly, because everyone else is extremely squishy. Yes, and that's a fun, like, I found the same. I've got a lot of strong champions in this faction, but keeping them alive was difficult, like consistently. This was also a really, a really challenging one. Um, only kind of stun set on a ghost spawn, no real CC. I didn't have Silar or Luria, so I didn't have any of the traditional CC champions. Yeah. So I had ghost spawn in a stun set. <laughs> a bit of a heart seeker from cold heart now and then yeah. and that was kind of it and it was kind of um i'd go into the valk wave i'd have to decrease their defense with ghost spawn let them then do all of their buffing and then strip it all with ceris and hope that i then had enough damage to kill a few of them before they got their abilities <laughs> back yeah yeah and people under us okay. underestimate like how important each individual component's gearing is like if you if you don't have the the necessary bits and pieces then it's like what can i do like what where am i failing why am i failing and how do i get around it and it, it just takes work but yeah this is very cool very cool people are asking uh, why it's only the one star that's just the first time i beat it i then beat it straight again after as a oh, okay star. i do have the screenshot somewhere i must have just sent you the wrong one that's fine um we've got demon spawn here 23 minutes so you've got Drexar in there. Take it you got him through um, Bazaar, did you? The, yeah, exactly, through the tag team. Yeah. And then uh, then you can see there's so two 60s, three 50s. Yeah. It's pretty but impressive. There's, there's the, the problem that I found with Demon Spawn, if you don't have um, a lure to keep the turn meter down, and you don't have... Yeah. There's no healers. Demon Spawn don't have any healers in their faction. <laughs> No, true. So keeping keeping five people alive against a boss that puts out a load of debuffs on you is really, really difficult. So what were you doing? Was that basically regen sets everywhere? So there is a regen set on Umbral, but beyond that, it's a it was about using Achax, Achax HP yeah. burn healing yeah. as much as possible. And when they are, the two adds are alive, that's enough because you've got HP burn on three champions, you get good healing. As soon as you've killed both the champions. It's then a race between the small healing you get from Atrax passive yeah. plus um, Fellhound's small continuous heal. Yeah, which isn't a lot. <laughs> and you killing the boss fast enough. Mm. So Drexar was in lifesteal, Umbral was in regen, Pain was just in stuff to get enough crit rate and accuracy to be able to put the debuffs, uh, and then Fellhound was in a stun set. Yeah, cool. That's nice. Again, I actually really like Akak. I think one of the best epics that they added to the game. Really fun champ. Really enjoyable champ. I, 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 myself and another guy in, in my cluster, we actually enjoy using Achak more than most other champions. Even if he's not the best at what he does, it's just, it's just fun. The gimmick just de fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This one of the best times. Dwarf, I find this the hardest. Like Probably the hardest crypt right here. Um, and I had to find a gimmick again, so I did it with a Rockbreaker at 50 as a tank and Torment okay. for DPS, which is also an unusual choice. Torment for DPS, right? <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd never the pulled... new Rune Keeper at yeah, 50 I, as well. I never pulled Gala or any of the sort of traditional DPS champions that people bring in Dwarves. Yeah. I mean, Torment hits hard. He's a, he's a decent does. damage dealer. Yeah. It's just funny building Torment in a stun set with... <laughs> <laughs> with high and, <laughs> and damage. <laughs> yeah. Nice man. And then um what's we've got two more here. Lizardman. Lizardman's tough as well. So you do have Virgum Car in there. One, two, three, four fifties again, guys. Four fifties. Lizardman down, four fifties. It's the rest of them not carry. even ascended. Um So what's going on here? How are you managing this one? So here, Broadmoor Regen, uh, Razin, Clan Boss Lifesteal, sw swapped out uh, Defense Percent Boots for Speed Boots just to, to get him cycling faster. And it's kind of about using the whole Basilisk gives himself uh, a, a revive, Broadmoor can revive twice, and try to cycle those revives and kill the boss fast enough, yeah. balancing it out between the two. And Quagan kind of helped uh, because you had the whole block debuffs and increased defense. And every single champion of mine ended up having higher defense than attack. So I was always getting the... Isn't this the boss, though, that ignores defense? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like Hence you basically why. Go high HP, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Y- you do. But or, I, I guess kind Basilisk. of didn't because Broadmoor and Basilisk. So Basilisk yeah. has two lives and then Broadmoor can revive someone. So it was kind of a DPS race. Can I kill him yeah. before he can kill enough of me that I can't revive? <laughs> Still, man. <laughs> and then we got one more, which is the Sacred Orders. This is the last one you've done, is it? Uh, the last one I did was Night Revs. I don't know. It okay. seems to have gone slightly out of order. And I tried to send to them all in order. So you've got Deacon in here, 50, 50 on Romero. Um, Armagus is just so, so good, and he's just so good and like worthwhile for anything, really, but Faction Wars for sure. Oh, um, and, and I obviously I ended up doing as well, a lot of damage. I used Armagus for the block revive on the, uh, on the Ignore Defense ad. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people would use Fenax. I already had Armagus built from for using him in Scarab and Doom Tower, so just you know, that's another way of, of getting it. And I noticed yeah. between him, Deacon, and Light Sworn, um, once the ads were down, the boss only took one turn the rest of the fight. Okay. So it's because of all the turn meter control you've Yeah, exactly. On. Yeah. Deacon's 15 each way, Armagus yeah. A1. Light Sworn has a small 10% on his A1. It's that's enough it. that the boss doesn't take turns. Yeah, brilliant. Wow, awesome. I mean, the Faction War stuff is really interesting. So a lot of people would be struggling and probably not just struggling, but also saying they can't do it. You know, they can't do it. I don't have enough 60s. It takes too long. I think that shows you how many you can do with 50s. Um, just whilst we're doing that, I'll show you guys the clan boss video. So a clan boss run that Earbads is doing. Uh, let's find it. Pretty interesting. I love seeing this stuff because it's, it's actually... Pretty damn impressive. So it's my it's my own speed tune. I've never seen it listed on Deadwood's site, and it's it's basically a four three where um, the champ running at four three goes first last before the stun, rather than before between, the stun. Right, before okay. The, before the stun. The idea there is I always end up with increased defense on for all three cycles, including on the stun target. Yeah, which just yeah. means the stun target survives a bit longer, and I'm massively abusing the, um, you know, the fifty percent chance to shrug off a debuff if you take more than twenty five percent damage. So you'll notice Razin starts shrugging off the stun after about turn fifteen or twenty. Okay. How um how early into the game did you get Vizier? Uh, January, like recently. Right. In, okay. In so, that so... folder, you'll see my clan boss progression of how I. Started with Madame, moved to Stagnite, moved to Light Sworn, and then it, Vizier and Brago happened together in January. Yeah. But the damage on a key with or without Vizier, it's not actually as big as you'd think it is. I guess so, it's just consistency with him, isn't it? It's it makes it pretty damn easy once he starts getting that A1 cooking. And how do you um, do against, like, Non-void? So, fine against all of the affinities except for Spirit. I literally yeah. don't have a way of dealing with it. So I just do run the same team against Spirit. I do, but Doom Priest is in like a Doom Tower build and Relentless. And Who wants okay. to be swapping gear all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who has money for that? So uh, <laughs> what I end up doing is I've, you, I'll always have done one key on Void, realistically. So I can get about 25 million on Spirit with this same team. So I'll, I'll mm. still easily 3 key it. Yeah, perfect. I just want to say quick, Sam, Harris, and uh, Dally, thank you for the subs. Appreciate that. Uh, let's just see if there's some questions coming through here while this is running through. Um, <laughs> what, what difficulty did you do the 220, uh, 277 million on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never did 277. My biggest key is like 62 million on Brutal, 55 on Nightmare, and 42 or 43 on Ultra Nightmare. I've definitely yeah. never done 277 million. I don't know where that's <laughs> coming from. No. Oh, that's admirable in the chat. How you doing, buddy? Are you back to playing Raid again? Or are you just, just checking out what's going on? Um, who else have we got? I think we had Colbrew coming as well and Valiant. Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, any other questions coming through just, just while we're kind of running through this clan boss? But yeah, it's... um. So before you had Brago, I mean, is this like 
one of the toughest things that you found when you've been working your way through over the time? I'd say it's the thing I spent most of my time trying to improve. Um, yeah. Really, it was that making that step from Nightmare to Ultra Nightmare without having A1 attack down, without having unkillable, was really hard. And that's where yeah. I spent a lot of, a lot of time min-maxing, like moving things around. Like it, it might be interesting to go and look through the clan boss builds of the champions to see how sure. I've ended up getting them to these levels. And ultimately, the Great Hall, that's why I went accuracy across the board Yeah, initially. It enabled me to run 50s in Faction Wars a lot easier to reach those accuracy thresholds. It enabled me to put Frozen Banshee in you know, defense boots, defense banner, defense everything. Like, Forget accuracy banners. They don't even run those. They're all in defense banners. Right, okay. And a few people saying here, um, have you made any mistakes along the way that you, you perhaps would go back and change? Yeah, certainly. Um, I started with Aethel. Uh, be, <laughs> that would be one of them. Um, yeah. That whole doing Minotaur the hard way. Uh, you'll notice if you go through, Romero was in my first team that I ever beat. Minotaur with, so I have pretty much a fully mastered Romero. That's definitely a waste right, of okay. time and resources. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not so good. <laughs> but then, I mean, for you, I, ge I guess he's helped you through at least a part of the game. Yeah, exactly. He did one part of the game, and then he came back for Faction Wars, so you know, it <laughs> <laughs> wasn't yeah. a complete waste in the end. But other than that, I mean, you're always going to make mistakes. You know, there's yeah. been certain tournaments where you've ended up I'm looking for that placement for the gems and maybe you just get sniped and you miss a few or you end up overreaching and you get the ancient, uh, the ancient shard instead. And like you, you make these small mistakes. You'd always be kicking yourself even for the smallest mistake, especially yeah. when, you're, when you're trying to play free to play. So you know you can't just go, oh, I'll just spend a couple of quid. That will that'll, that'll yeah, solve Yeah, I mean, problem. have you been tempted by that? Just at Loads. some point being like, you know what? Let's just push this one. I'd say that the things that I've been most tempted by is the monthly gem pack, particularly before Advanced mm. Quest and Doom Tower. Once they added Advanced Quest and Doom Tower, playing this game free to play became relatively easy. I almost you've got it, so many more resources that you can pick up. You've got so many resources yeah. to get now, and so much to actually, do, I guess. You exactly, know, it's like just to, the to point, use your time. Exactly to the point that I don't think I have more time in the day. Yeah. To even spend money on the game. <laughs> yeah. But before that, yeah, the monthly gem pack, occasionally they would tempt you with those like two legendary books for 10 quid thing. And I'd be like, I could actually yeah. book a legendary. This could be exciting. Could make use of that. <laughs> like, my first legendary I ever booked was Nethril. And that took right. a long time because, you know, before you're even, basically, you don't get any books until you get onto Nightmare. And that whole juggling where well, you need to be at least doing Spider 13 to be able to get the jewelry to get to yeah. nightmare and if you don't really have the champions to do it you only have one good legendary at the time that's kind of carrying all your teams and not booked yeah it, it's i that. guess i guess your progression in this game it starts off extremely slow doesn't it and as yeah. you get people mastered as you get a few champions booked it's actually quite a, a, a swift curve that you start to be able to do a lot more stuff yeah that's nice man awesome yeah. I'll right, just let's... answer one of your um, people in chat, Torex79, sure. is asking, does the position count? Um, and yes, it's not just lead. So the way the game works, who goes first, is if you have, say, all five champions at the exact same speed, it will go in position order. Now, if you have your champions faster than the clan boss, which obviously a 191 in Nightmare is over 20 speed faster, they, in theory, will lap the clan boss at some point. So depending on which order they're in, they'll lap the clan boss at a different time and they'll end up in a different part of the turn order when it gets into one-to-one -one sync. Yeah. So they only lap once. Like these champions that are a bit faster only ever lap once. Sure. For whatever reason, the way it works is that. And then, yeah, if you change where they are in the turn order, which one laps is moved. Again, that was a bit of a playing in the calculator and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> just sort of seeing how it how it evolved. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. So, one thing to call out here: free champion Drexar, free champion Sil, free champion, but not easy to get, but free champion Arbiter, and then two epics. Even though you've got all those legendaries, 
to beat Doom Tower for the final boss. Three of them, three champions. And um, and likewise, similarly, I'd say actually the waves are the harder part. Once you yeah. got past the waves, the final boss isn't so bad. Uh, Stagnite's there really just to get a decrease attack out to be able to survive yeah. the, the damage of the boss. But even the waves, a lot of them are kind of in a similar guise. Uh, I've, I've used Brago a lot, ended up in the waves. And Countess Lix, I actually got using that 150 Ancient Shard pool event they did recently. Um, oh, you did that? Okay. I did that. I spent 8,300 gems to get it. Did you? Wow, that's big. <laughs> I mean, that shows actually uh, the amount of comments that said that this is a whale content. This is not for free to play. Um, there you go, guys. It is for free to play, apparently. Countess Licks, you should have got it if you were free to play. I basically um, worked out that having got to Doom Tower 112 the month before, I didn't hmm. have a Silar. I didn't have anyone who could put the AoE decrease speed on and provide any other utility. Yes, I have a Visix, but I'm not <laughs> leveling a Visix up. Um, yeah. She does nothing else. So I thought Countess Lix could fill that role of adding yeah. a little bit more TM control and actually enable me to find a way to get through those really hard floors, which I think and, from memory is like 112, 114, 116, and 118, I think. Yeah. Four really hard ones. And, and, and you, didn't use, you didn't use Seer in your Doom Tower stuff? Or you did until a certain level? No, I didn't. Uh, didn't. Basically right. being, if you, don't, if you don't have... I didn't have a single triple buffer uh, okay. in my roster until I eventually pull Helmet. And in these later floors, if you don't have a Sifi or a Duchess... There's no way you can bring Seer in because you A, you're fighting Torment, B, everyone almost one shots you. Yeah. So unless you have someone who can, you know, add that survivability, have that revive, you you can't be running Seer unless you have a Duchess or a or a Sif. That's cool. Torment coming in here. But basically just for different um different levels, just bringing in the what you need pretty much bringing yeah. in what you need yeah well look man thank you so much for thank coming you. on and showing it off it was really cool um my pleasure. guys hopefully you enjoyed it i think it was a, a really good thing to see so look you're bad thank you so much buddy really like that it's really fun yeah. thanks for having me thanks. all right catch you later bye bye Bye. so you go guys really really impressive account very impressive to do all that free to play. Great knowledge from this guy as well. Um, just want to say thanks to Earbad for coming onto my stream, showcasing the account and showing us some of his teams. Hopefully it helps you to build some teams out where you're struggling for, um, you know, the right combinations, the right setups. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.